The government's education adviser resigns in a row over funding for school catch-up plans. 1.4 billion has been promised to help pupils who fell behind during the pandemic, but teachers say the money doesn't make the grade. I feel it's very short. I feel it's about um, headline grabbing rather than supporting young people. And I feel very disappointed by the announcement today. Well, the man appointed to oversee the school recovery agreed. Sir Kevin Collins said it wasn't a credible plan and quit. Also ahead. More than three quarters of adults in the UK have had their first dose of the vaccine. But Boris Johnson says we need to be cautious about reopening surge and attacks like this on paramedics. Now ambulance staff in England will wear body cameras and... An extra bank holiday and a party at the Palace plans to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. This is the ITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. One of the government's top education advisers has resigned tonight amid a row over funding to help children catch up on learning they've missed during the pandemic. So Kevin Collins was appointed to oversee the classroom recovery, but said it wasn't credible that it could be achieved with the package announced today. £1.4 billion will go towards getting children in England back on track, most of which will be spent on extra tutoring for pupils. But school leaders say it isn't enough. And even the Prime Minister admitted more money will be needed. Our UK editor Paul Brand has the details. It may be half term, but it's hardly the first week spent away from school. After months of disruption, the children at this holiday club worry about what else they're aiming for. Everything they do is defined by Covid and online learning has set them back. And it was all of the whole class in one call and I didn't feel like I could say stuff in front of all of them. I just felt, I felt really nervous. Were you worried that you were falling behind a little bit? Yeah, I was really worried because every time I got a question wrong, I would feel like really bad and stuff. My older sister was busy on the computer and my brother was trying to do his work and there was not enough room in the house for all of us to do our work. Today, the government promised to make up for that disadvantage by investing a billion pounds in 100 million hours of catch-up tutoring for children, as well as 400 million pounds of teacher training. But it'll have to last until 2024, which schools say will spread it very thin. Schools will always be grateful for any money they get, and, and schools can be incredibly creative with how they use that money. But I feel it's very short. I feel it's about um, headline grabbing rather than supporting young people. And I feel very disappointed by the announcement. Today's announcement backs away from other measures like reducing the holidays. Though I understand the school day is likely to be extended possibly from as early as September next year. The biggest round today though is over the money. It is just a fraction of what the education department had argued for. Within the last hour, the government's own advisor on catch-up learning has resigned, having wanted £15 billion. Sir Kevin Collins told the Prime Minister, as I set out in my reports to you, I do not believe it is credible that a successful recovery can be achieved with a programme of support this size. Which leaves this minister once again having to defend his plans. We've seen over the last few months uh, £1.7 billion of extra funding to help children catch up already announced. On top of that £1.7 billion, there's this additional £1.4 But you which did is, ask for 10 times more than that, didn't you? The which is quite did ask for 10 times more? Which is quite unprecedented outside of a spending review. The hint there is that more money for pupils is in play, perhaps later in the year. But for many, today's sum does feel way off target.
Well, a lot of teachers not happy. A uh, key advisor resigns uh, tonight. I mean, just how damaging is this uh, for the government's credibility on schools? Yeah, Lucrezia, the government's own champion on this issue doesn't feel he can trumpet its policies. It doesn't get much more damaging than that. And in fact, tonight, Sir Kevin Collins has put out an even more damning statement saying a half-hearted approach risks failing hundreds of thousands of pupils. It is too narrow, too small and will be delivered too slowly. Now, he is a well-respected figure in the education sector. He was a teacher himself. He's got a lot of support among schools. And tonight, one of the teaching unions, the ASCL, has told us that this completely undermines confidence in the government's approach. They feel it leaves the education secretary's position vulnerable once again. And rather than children tonight, it feels as though it's the government playing catch up. I think they are going to have to look again at these plans. All right, Paul. Thank you. Boris Johnson has said there is no evidence at the moment to suggest England's COVID restrictions cannot be fully lifted on June the 21st. Three quarters of adults in the UK have now had at least one vaccine dose. And despite the number of cases rising, the country is continuing to take steps back towards normality, as our political correspondent Carl Dinham reports. The Prime Minister are meeting children in the Downing Street Garden today. Who likes maths? He certainly has some difficult numbers to figure out in the next fortnight. The question is, are we still on track? Last week you said you could see nothing in the data to indicate that the next stage of opening up could not happen on June the 21st. Is that still the case? I can see nothing uh, in the data at the moment that uh, means we can't go ahead with step four or the, the opening on June the 20, 21st. But we've got to be so cautious because there's no question uh, the ONS uh, data of infection rates is showing an increase. In the last 24 hours, 4,000 new cases were reported. That's up almost 35% on the previous seven days. Hospital admissions are also rising, up 123. The week-on-week -week increase there, 17%. And 12 coronavirus deaths were reported today, although the week-on-week -week numbers are down nearly 15%. A key question now is how much are the vaccines saving infected people from going into hospital? But it's not the only issue to be determined. Infection rates rising are important as well. There are a lot of members of the, uh, particularly the younger community, that are unvaccinated at the moment. Uh, and should infection rates rise, then there is always the possibility that new variants will emerge. Three quarters of UK adults have now had one jab, nearly half have had two. And at Lord's Cricket Ground today, confidence in the vaccines was strong. I'm double vaxxed, yeah. he's double vaxxed. I think that's the ticket out of here. I've only had one jab, you've got to go with it, follow the precautions, do what they advise, live your life. Whether it is safe to remove all the remaining restrictions... Two meter distance at all times. The Prime Minister will decide before the 14th of June. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Westminster. Our health editor Emily Morgan is here. Emily, still not clear whether restrictions will be lifted later on this month, but the vaccine rollout going really well, which has to be a positive sign. Of course it is. It's a really positive sign. Yes, three quarters of adults have had one dose. But actually, more significantly, I think, is that half of adults have had two doses. Now it's the two doses that is just so important because we know that is what offers the best protection against the variant that was first detected in India. And the government has pledged to offer every adult over the age of 50 and vulnerable person two doses by the 21st of June. Now, if that happens and we are on track for that hap to happen, then that will feed into their thinking about whether to unlock on the 21st of June. Now, Matt Hancock, in a speech today that I went to, made it very, very clear that the most important data they're looking at and waiting for is cases and whether those cases translate into people getting seriously ill in hospital or whether the vaccine breaks that link and stops people getting ill in hospital. At the moment, it's just not clear. Mm. Cases are up quite significantly today. Hospital emissions are also up, but it'll be a week or so before we can really see whether the vaccine is having any sort of impact. Well, I'll have to wait to see. Emily, thank you. Well, we'll have to wait for news about June the 21st. It's expected that tomorrow holidaymakers will find out whether more countries will go on the UK's green travel list, meaning you don't need to quarantine on return. We don't expect major changes though. Some industry experts believe Malta and several Greek islands could be among the few destinations given the green light. Here's our consumer editor, Chris Choi. Heathrow today and hardly the summer holiday rush we knew before Covid. 
For millions, the big question now is which overseas destinations are possible in future? Waiting for the new list is nail-biting for wannabe traveller Nora Kawegi. Literally, my fingers are crossed for the updated green list tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping that Greece will be put on. Currently, there are only 12 destinations on the green list for travel without quarantine on return, including Portugal, Gibraltar, Israel and Iceland. But many of the most popular destinations, including USA, Spain, Greece and Italy, remain on the amber list requiring quarantine. The next update is expected tomorrow and then another around June the 24th. Good afternoon, Paul Travel. A group of just over a thousand travel agents is now highlighting the stress this is causing to them and their customers. It, there's been very mixed messages regarding the announcement tomorrow and personally I don't really think we're going to get very much on the green list. Most agents are feeling much the same, very confused with all the rules. There's been no clarification from the government. Green list extension depends on vaccination rates and infection in each destination. From the travel trade today, a push for quicker progress. Isn't the danger though that we might quicken the reopening of transport but... but slow down our exit from pandemic. But if you roll out those vaccines for another two, three, four weeks during June, there is absolutely no basis for any travel restrictions, certainly short haul to and from Europe, by the time we get to the 1st of July. Overseas, there are hopes that changes to our travel rules will help fill their resorts. Many people have never felt more like a foreign holiday, yet rarely have the options been so limited. Chris Choi, ITV News. Police investigating the murder of a 14-year-old boy who was chased and stabbed to death in Birmingham have said racist language was directed at him and his friends before the incident. John Ree died on Monday. His family said tonight he was an incredibly talented young boy. Police say they are looking into the motive behind the attack. Six people arrested yesterday are still in police custody. A police officer accused of murdering the former footballer, Dalian Atkinson, has told his trial he feared for his life during their encounter. Mr Atkinson died after police were called to an address in Telford in August 2016. The court has heard PC Benjamin Monk tasered Mr Atkinson three times and kicked him on the ground. Well, Stacey Foster's been following the trial. Stacey, what has the jury been told today? Well, Delian Atkinson died in hospital in August 2016, shortly after police were called to a disturbance at his father's home in Telford. The court's already heard that he was tasered for 33 seconds. He was kicked in the head as police tried to arrest him that night. PC Benjamin Monk, seen here leaving court this afternoon with a briefcase, said he was terrified and intimidated by Atkinson that night and that he thought he might die. He said he had no memory of depressing his taser for that long. And he said that it was instinctive to kick Atkinson as he tried to get up off the floor. He said the force that he used was about a four out of 10. He told the court, what I can be absolutely certain of is my intention. I did not want to hurt Mr. Atkinson. Asked if he thought that his actions were reasonable, uh, PC Monk replied, I just did the best I could. PC Monk denies charges of murder and manslaughter. His junior colleague, PC Mary Ellen Betley Smith, denies assault. The trial here at Birmingham Crown Court continues. All right, Stacey in Birmingham, thank you. Still to come on the ITV Evening News, why we'll all be getting a four-day weekend next year for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And sadly, before Christmas, she passed away and um, I'm still thinking about her. <laughs> the seven-year-old reaching new heights in memory of his mum. Those stories and more after the break. Welcome back. Every day, paramedics rush to help people in need. And yet last year, thousands were attacked on duty, sometimes leaving them with serious injuries. Well, in a bid to drive that number down, ambulance staff in England will now be fitted with body-worn cameras, which could act as a deterrent and provide crucial evidence. Here's John Ray. What kind of patient punches a paramedic who's answered their SOS? The answer is an alarmingly large number, though it is rare for assaults like this in Nottingham to be caught on camera. 
Alan Jones's own life and that of his colleague were put in danger when they revived the first of two victims of cardiac arrests on the same 999 call. As I turned around, I saw him coming back into the room with a, a knife, which is about that big, and he tried to plunge it into my colleague's back, uh, which I intervened when we ended up fighting on the floor for about 10 minutes till the police arrived. Over the past year, more than 3,500 ambulance staff have reported being assaulted. That's up a third in five years. The year-long lockdown has created tensions and increased dangers faced by many frontline workers, from police Do you own this shop? Yeah, is it my desk or why have you got a bird? to supermarkets, where the co-op has issued some staff with body cameras after a rise in abuse from customers. Richard Ilderton is among ambulance crews who've already piloted body cameras, emergency kit he believes would have come to his rescue when he was attacked. They've punched us, they've grabbed us, they've shoved us towards the door. And this was pre-camera times. If I'd had the camera, I could have activated that there and then as it started to get heated and it might have changed the situation. The video evidence from Nottingham helped secure a conviction for assault. But paramedics hope body cameras will be a powerful deterrent to those who would do harm to staff whose only purpose is to help. John Ray, ITV News. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution is urging people not to take inflatable toys to the beach after several people got into difficulty in the hot weather. A nine-year-old girl had to be rescued after being swept out to sea on a dinghy in North Wales. She was found half a mile from the beach. Plans have been announced for how the Queen's Platinum Jubilee will be celebrated next month. They include a live concert at Buckingham Palace and a four-day bank holiday weekend to mark what will be 70 years on the throne. Well, Shihab Khan is outside Buckingham Palace. Shihab, uh, tell us more about these plans. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, February of 2022, the Queen will have been on the throne for 70 years. It's the first time a British sovereign has done that and that they've been on the throne for seven decades. Now, she'll be travelling around the country to mark that platinum jubilee and we expect other members of the royal household to do exactly the same. The big highlight will be the four-day bank holiday in June that we'll be getting. That'll be from Thursday the 2nd of June through to Sunday the 5th of June with a platinum party at the Palace on the Saturday featuring some of the world's biggest stars. We are still waiting for the performers and the names to be announced. On Sunday, neighbours and communities across the country will be asked to get together for a big Jubilee lunch and there will be a platinum Jubilee pageant at Buckingham Palace showcasing the arts, theatre and music and that will feature more than 5,000 people from across the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Now, we have, of course, celebrated significant milestones for the Queen before. Think back to the big celebrations in 2012 for her Diamond Jubilee. Now, during that period, she had Prince Philip by her side. Now, that obviously won't be the case this time round, and his presence will be missed. Now, given the year that we've had with the pandemic, having these extra bank holidays and these celebrations is something that we can all look forward to. Definitely. She have. Thank you. A teenager in the US has become an internet sensation after she had a very close encounter with a bear and her cubs. The mama bear was walking along the wall of Haley Moronico's house in California when her four dogs came out barking. Well, Haley ran out to protect them. She is fine, as are the dogs, but she's urging people not to follow in her footsteps. Do not push bears. Do not get close to bears. You do not want to get unlucky. I just happened to come out unscathed. And finally, the aspiring young pilot scaling new heights in his mother's memory. Seven-year-old Jacob Newson's mum died at Christmas to raise money for the hospice which cared for her. He's climbed Yorkshire's three highest mountains. And Jacob told Richard Pallow he hopes his mum was smiling down on him. As half-term activities go, it is pretty impressive. <laughs> scaling Yorkshire's three highest peaks in three days and waiting at the summit, a hug from Dad, and a chance to feel closer to mum again. I just love her. She's so beautiful. Um, but sadly, before Christmas, she passed away, and um, I'm still thinking about her, and it's I love it. Did you think about her on the top of the, yeah. the peaks? <laughs> was she there with you? Yeah. Andrea was diagnosed with breast cancer 18 months ago. Jacob's wedding present to his parents last year a salute, 
Her final wish was not for flowers at her funeral, but money for her hospice. Hence the challenge. I'm guessing it's this way. Yeah, you got there. It's raised a phenomenal amount of money for the hospice, and, and they're just completely blown away um, by the, the money. Um, and hopefully, you know, she'll be wherever she is. She'll be smiling and, and happy that that we've done her proud. Really, I guess. How's that, Jacob? Thank you. You're welcome. His dream is to be a pilot, and with the help of the RAF Mountain Rescue Service, he has got one stage closer. Also, I can tell you something that I really love when they got me at the top. They got me a proper pilot's helmet with visors on it as well. But she's looking down from heaven and smiling so much. £36,000 already raised and, like Jacob today, still climbing. Richard Pallow, ITV News, in the Yorkshire Dales. Amazing work, Jacob. That is it. Shraggy is here with the news at 10.15 tonight after the football from me and all the team. Bye-bye.